Hey everyone, hey guys, hey three gals who watch us. Today's, I consider the episode to be about my colored vinyl selection. Hey everyone, welcome to today's show. Man, I just returned from a hypnotic trance. It all started when I wanted to put out a record and when I pulled it out of the sleeve, I noticed it happened to be one of my colored vinyl records out of my collection. And when I put it on the turntable, I wasn't even able to get the needle on it before I went into a very deep trance. Within this trance, I soon realized I was playing the part of someone on YouTube who had a record channel. And suddenly here I was introducing all my records that were colored vinyl. I will be playing some of my record collection for you and it will all be on colored vinyl. This one I'm showing you is the first one I ever got when I started my record collection. I must have been roughly around five years old and uh, got it for a birthday gift. Birthday greeting to you, birthday greeting to you, although you look like a million, I guess you're not that old. I never wanted to trade this for anything. This is a very special record in my collection. So now, the first record I'm playing is the one I just am talking about, the first record I ever got. It's called Pumpkinhead, The Little Bear. So I knew after I bought Pumpkinhead the Little Bear, I was uh, truly inspired. I knew I was going to, for the rest of my life, start collecting vinyl. So after I got Pumpkinhead the Little Bear, I decided to go out and search for a Christmas record, and this, this one was red, too. I was so into that first one being red, so I got Silent Night, and we wish you a Merry Christmas, tying in with Deck the Halls. And this is on the Tots and Teens label. I'm going to give this a spin, and the soloist on this version of Silent Night is a perfect name. It's sort of a combination of two seasons. Her name is June, and her last name is Winters, so let's have a listen. It just brings back memories. So this would be the next record I bought, and it's Toy Parade. It's on the Starbright Musical Pack of Fun label, and it has an all-star cast. So let's give her a listen. This record, it came off 
I'm pretty sure the black market. And eventually I found out that all sorts of recordings that were distributed via the black market. And this, as far as I know, was one of the first ones by Dolph Hewitt. Raise your hand if you know who Dolph Hewitt is. So you're supposed to listen to the grooves for the music, but also there are hidden backtracking and masking and all that. So I bet you're anxious to hear this one. So let's put that one on now. I would send you rolls of cut the cost to my so I'm sending death a deal. I'll send you rolls of what I get rich and the pocket with mother to fail. This is one of my favorite channels. Uh, this is a record put out by Jordan the Lion. And if you become a friend of his, he will send you one of these. I was very happy to receive this. All right, this is a real treat. The next record was mail ordered back in the day. And it's called the Official Six String Guitar Tuning Record and it's on the m and &E label. This is one you can also play with. So I have my guitar, I'm gonna play along to it and let's see if uh, we can make some music here. Here we go. So good. So the last time I played a coffee house, somebody came up to me and asked, you know, it was a request and they, they said, do you know the official six string tuning guitar song? I said, I sure do. And I played it just like you heard it. He left me a nice tip in the tip jar. Thank you. So I also have this other tuning record that was um, instigated by the Nazi party back in the 40s because they changed everything from 432 to the, what we know mostly today, and that was to tune everything to a certain frequency or pitch that would be harsher to our senses. But I'll just play you some and let's see what you think. So the next category, after I started uh, collecting records, I first got um, a lot of 45s and then I graduated to the 78 RPM. And this is uh, unusual because uh, I don't see a whole lot of colored 78s. And so, uh, but this happens to have one of my favorite songs of all time, Deep in the Heart of Texas. So. Let's give that a spin.
But sure enough, as I kept searching for various 78s, this popped up. I'd say this is much more than a flat, plain colored vinyl plaque. It has a picture on it, and the backside is pictorial. This is by Clyde McCoy and his orchestra, playing his version of Sugar Blues. So most colored vinyl uh, proliferates in the 33 RPM. Who would have ever thought that Dean Martin would release something this cool? Most of the colored vinyl I buy sort of by accident. When I bought this album, you may have heard of them, the Pink Fairies. Who would have thought that when you pull this album out, it's actually pink? Let's talk about pink again, but it's a different pink. It's Pink Floyd. That's not pink. There's some pink in it. Look at there's Nick in the middle, but it's mostly purple. He turn it around. There's Roger. This is a record by the doors. Maybe you can see me through it. Fascinating, isn't it? The Rolling Stones get your yayas out. It happens to be blue. What would we do without an Elvis record, right? And he released one colored vinyl record on RCA. I think it's his last, one of his last regular records that he released. Guess which color it is. A great songwriter named Jonathan Richmond. This is a reissue, and here we go. Let's see what color this is. It's gonna be a surprise. Look at that, swimming in a pool of colored vinyl. I would say this photograph was a behind the scenes at this concert. Look at the shade. The color of a radish. Oh, this one's black. Let's have a look at this one. So I'm glad they both weren't yellow. Just one yellow one in this double record. I think someone in the record factory puked that day. They had too many tacos or something like that. This is a great thing to know about this particular record because at first when you pull it out of the sleeve, it's another record that appears to be black again. But when you hold it up to light, you'll see that it magically turns into something else. So here's an example of that. Well, that's a brief overview of how I came around to color vinyl and my history according to the color vinyl and why to this day I still occasionally like to buy color vinyl. Thank you very much. <laughs>